If you're seriously ill or critically injured. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? He's struggling to breathe. Very seriously injured. In some of the UK's most remote places. Oh, 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 I can't. Oh, yeah. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. There's just been an accident on the M1 motorway. It's on fire and it's gone into the railway bridge. Your life is on the line. How far did he fall? About five metres. He's intubated and ventilated. You need some of Britain's most elite medics. Is there any serious bleeding? Yes, there is, yeah. Calm. Phil, legs, anything below my neck. We're in a remote location in the middle of the woodland. they have broken the back. The speed of the Yorkshire Air Ambulance can make the difference between life and death. Your discretion, take off. Fedest 09 lifted. Fedest 09. Today, a DIY enthusiast goes into cardiac arrest after a fall. <laughs> There's a major crash in the hills. They're going to cut the horse, then lift the roof up so we can get the chap out with injuries to his, his neck. And a wasp sting leaves a cyclist with a rare allergy fighting for his life. Further reports of the patient's now in cardiac arrest. In a suburban street in Harrogate, a life or death struggle is on the way. Ambulance services the patient breathing. <laughs> he's breathing, but he's fallen and I can't get. Is he conscious? He's just conscious. Please, it looks like he's going to die here. He's not breathing. A frantic woman is being coached by a 999 operator to perform CPR on her unconscious husband. Oh, there, he's got a breath. He's got a breath. All right, stay calm so we can help him. What I want you to do, I want you to say now every single time that he takes a breath in, OK? Are you ready? Local paramedics are on their way. 30 miles away, air ambulance dispatcher Pete Valance is coordinating the mission. If, if you think we the patient are, yeah. is unmanageable yeah. for, for actually flying, it may be that, that you have to nip into the ED at Harrogate. Oh, Topford should be with you within five minutes, however. 950 fuel, engine confirmed, sir. So flight confirmed. Confirmed, clearly. Thank you, it's 8.58. Emergencies don't come much more urgent than this. It's a man who's fallen off a ladder, had a cardiac arrest. Oh, crikey, right? 9 9 lifted on way to Harrogate, over. The man's heart is fluttering uselessly in his chest. He's in ventricular fibrillation, or VF. I know, I've been trying to get a bit of info on this job for you. Apparently it's a VF arrest uh, that's now GCS3, but agitated. At the moment, the patient's still on scene, so if you want to go to the grid of the scene first, just have a look if there is anywhere suitable to land. Yeah. If not, relocate to the straight, please, have a... Cunning plan. Yeah, that's all received, have a... As Helimed 99 circles the man's house, there's good news from the ground. The patient's heart has been restarted. Right, if, uh, if you look into the one o'clock, you can see the two hours of vehicles now, yeah? Well, um, all you have to do is come back on yourself, turn right, turn right, and you're there. So they can, but if we need to relocate, we can just come to here, can't we? They're touching down on a bowling green just around the corner. Street, about Lovely, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there. Hey, well. Johan Bielby is 55. He was working on wiring when he collapsed and fell six feet. <laughs> Johan's semi conscious and agitated, the result of his brain being starved of oxygen. His daughter is trying to help calm him down. He's had a cardiac event of some kind, quite agitated, has a lump at the back of his head. Right. So we can't confirm whether it's a collapse that's caused the fall. Right. Or whether it's following a head in, he's fallen and a head in, yes. etc. If it wasn't for his wife's first aid knowledge, he'd be dead. I was upstairs drying my hair and I heard a bang and thought something had just fallen. By the time I got downstairs, he wasn't breathing. I was able to administer CPR. Pete has given him the strong sedative, midazolam, but Johan's erratic behavior continues. There's no option but to anesthetize him before he's flown to hospital, a risky procedure known as rapid sequence induction, or RSI. Medic one to air desk. They're calling in the second air ambulance with a flying doctor on board. 
Do this patient's really difficult to control with the midazolam. He's going to need RSA in. If you can send a 9-8 with a doctor, we'll get a kit dump ready, have Helimed 98 is airborne within minutes. AD Fell will prepare the surgical instruments for the doctor's arrival. Um, this is our rapid seek induction kit, which basically has everything in it that we uh, need to um, do an anaesthetic outside the hospital. It's very agitated, so um, that's going to make it very difficult to manage, difficult to transport. So the safest way to do that is to um, anaesthetise the patient. Helimed 98 is about to join the rescue. The team's fortunate to find a landing site so close to their patient. Johan is continuing to struggle with his rescuers. Johan's son-in-law is bringing flying doctor Alia Yakub up to speed. She must think and work fast. Today, tomorrow, we're going to have 20 milligrams of IV Dazimals from the crew. That'll give him one milligram. Paramedic Pete tries to reassure Johan's wife. Ali, the doctor here, so we're going to give him some more drugs, basically, looking like he's having an operation. So we're going to just basically put him to sleep. His brain's going to be a little bit confused, so we're just, just taking all the pressure off him. So we're, yeah, we're controlling breathing, we're getting all the oxygen we need into him, and just, and just keeping him nice and calm, OK? Now, I know it seems like we're messing about a bit on the scene, but the more we do here, the less they have to do at hospital when they get sorted out, OK? So it's not going to be very nice, you know, watching him get put to sleep, but, I mean, doctors do this thousands of times a day. Are you ready? Just have as much as possible, please. Okay. 9.50. All the fence going in. All the fence. First, they must paralyse Johan. Ten, ten minutes ten left. Ready for a cry? Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to feel a little bit sleepy. No, Valid, it's fine now. Valid, it's fine. No, he's cracked on. Wonderful. They're going to feed a tube down his windpipe to take over his breathing. The team's trained to do this, but it's a tense operation. The stakes are high. OK, minutes up. Get out of the Feel like yes. Okay. Right, I've got the blue tube. You got the tube for now? Yeah, I've got the tube. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, feel that, Eddie? Felt it. Right. Okay, cough up. Johan is now unconscious. This should prevent his condition worsening. It's been a traumatic experience for his wife, but it's clear she's saved his life. I didn't want to be hanging over them and bothering them. I just wanted to stand back and let them do their job because that's what they need to get on and do. They don't want somebody whimpering around them, you know, because it is frightening. It's scary, really scary. I'm scared. <laughs> Right. So well done, lots of people can't do that in that situation. Now, we're going to take him, he's asleep now, we're doing his breathing for him. Yes, and that's OK, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's fine, we just need to take him to lead. Okay? Yes, yeah. You're going to see us down? Yeah, we'll follow you. OK. Yeah. Thank is you he allergic to anything that you No, know he's about. not allergic okay. to anything. We'll look after him. Yes, I know you will. I'm confident you will. It's the lady on the phone, on the 999 lady, she said, you know, put your, put your hand on the breastbone, you know, where you, she's, you, do you know where I mean? You need to put your hands. I said, that's fine, I know, I know what I'm doing, I know. So it's five years since I did that course. And you don't forget, you know, it stays with you. And it's in an emergency situation, you, you, you don't forget, you, you remember exactly where to put your hands. 
Thanks to a first aid course and a clinical procedure usually performed in hospital, the team's patient has a chance of making a complete recovery. He's stable, we're doing his breathing for him, his blood pressure's fine, his oxygen levels are 100%. We're just going to take him to the LGI where they're expecting him. And that BPs are in every two minutes, is it, Matt? Anaesthetists train for years to do it in hospital, so they do it in somewhere's garage. That's quite a big call. The CO2 is good. It's ventilating well. It's not without its risks itself. Obviously, you're stopping the patient from breathing and then taking that over. And it's something that we drill quite regularly and work, you know, to work as a team. So everyone has a, a role to assign and get, you know, make it happen as quickly as we can, really. Despite being resuscitated, many victims of cardiac arrest lose brain function or suffer personality changes. It'll be 24 hours before Johan's family find out whether he lives to return home the same man who climbed a ladder this morning. Off-road biking is a passion for thousands. From rugged countryside to urban clearance sites, there are few places bikers can't reach. But it's a dangerous pastime. Helimed 98 is heading for South Yorkshire. Paramedics Al Day and Paul Holmes are used to rescuing off-road riders, but they're rarely as young as today's victim. We've got an 11 year old who has um, come off his motocross bike. Um, we've got an ambulance on scene who's requested our attendance, so uh, essentially it could be quite major trauma. Pilot Steve Wardby's heading for an off road track near Doncaster. It's well known. Okay, top left hand corner as we look yeah, at it, just yeah. by the go kart track. Element 98 to the air desk uh, visual scene. Oh, near the ground to the south of it. 98 London. Bailey Kenworthy is badly hurt. It looks like his thigh bone, the femur, is shattered. All right, mate. Uh, young lad's um, throttle stuck. Instead of going right track, he's come straight up here. Bike's landed in here with him. All right, OK. Um, pain scores 10 out of 10. Um, he's absolutely freezing. Every time you try and move him, yeah, he's screaming yeah. out in pain. We just can't get him out of public, can we? Well, no, Bailey landed on the edge of a ditch after flying five metres through the air. How deep is this? Just ankle height. Whoop! <laughs> Bit deeper than ankle there, isn't it? Oh, he's washed my boot for me. Hello, Bailey. Hello. My name's Paul. Yeah. Okay, mate, we're going to get you sorted, but we need to take you out of this puddle. Yeah. Okay, now there's plenty of us here. We're going to have to move you, but obviously your legs going to be quite painful until we do, but we need to get you out of this puddle. Yeah. He had his helmet on. Uh, did he somersault at all? Or... Yeah. Yeah. On his back and how he is. Yeah, down so he cartwheeled and then landed as he is now. Paul's worried that the impact may have caused a spinal injury. If you land on his feet, I won't yeah. be overly concerned, yeah. but yeah. if you land on his back, yeah. in case that's distracting, we'll get a call on him anyway. Yeah. All right, just be on the side. Get his attraction splint as well, mate. Yeah. He's been absolutely fantastic, Paul, while he's been down here. Absolutely. Right, Bailey, this is going to be uncomfortable, mate, but what we need to make sure is that obviously you're not going to... That's it, you're going to keep your head nice and still, mate. We need to make sure that you've not injured your neck in the fall, particularly because you've landed on your back. All right. They're protecting Bailey's neck, but Paul knows his leg injury could also be life-threatening. Are you right with his head? Yeah, I'm we need to... Obviously, you need to get into a position because we're going to have to get this underneath him. Yeah. If you, if you want these, should we just pick him up like that and slight board and knees? Yeah. Are you right just to slight board and knees? his leg? Yeah, yeah, you just check his leg, mate, yeah. yeah. His dad's naturally concerned. Moving his son will be agonising. Listen, listen, keep breathing on that. You scream out, mate, as much as you want. All right, but we're going to have to lift you. Yeah, if you bring your arm... You hang on to that for me, Bailey. Ba Bailey. Bailey. Bailey, hold on to that. Two hands. On to that. The problem with a fractured femur is when you break the bone, um, you've got a lot of muscle, a lot of tissue around the bone, and the two fractured ends then can move around, and they cut through the soft tissues and the blood vessels, um, do a lot of damage. One, two, two three. Good lad, Bailey. It's incredibly painful, as you can hear. I mean, it also causes a lot of internal blood loss, so you get shock. Well done, Bailey, well done, mate. I'm... 
If, if you scream just like that, just be moving it. If we can try and get a needle in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Daddy's just going to hold your other hand over there, OK? Paul wants to use their most powerful drug to sedate Bailey. He's very much in pain with his legs, so we're going to try and get some um, needles in him to give some analgesia while we're trying to straighten his legs because we can't leave it in, in as it is. We'll give him some ketamine. Yeah. All right. The cannula will allow them to pump pain-killing drugs straight into his bloodstream. Start off, we're just getting five mil increments, I think, uh, Al. We're getting five mil. So if I draw up, if I draw up 20, yeah, yeah, that'll yeah. be about maximum, will yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. They must straighten okay. Bailey's broken leg. The ketamine will dull the pain and ensure their patient will remember nothing. I'm going to give him a drug which might cause him to freak out a little bit. All right, so if he's got... Yeah, for now, just while we sort him out. But Bailey's still frightened. Listen, mate, listen to me. You won't. Listen, listen, mate, listen. You trust me? Yeah. Well, it is. It's going to be a little bit drowsy. Yeah. OK. This is a critical procedure that will be painful even to watch. You come and take that ankle. <laughs> OK, just don't, don't move his leg yet. Just, just hold his ankle. OK, that's it, either side. And once we say now, what you're going to do is pull his leg straight, OK, in that direction. You'll need to put quite a lot of force on it. Don't be scared if he screams. He will do. He will do. All right. Listen, mate. All right. We're going to have to sort your leg out in a few minutes. Listen, we can't leave you, can we? You're going to be too cold. Well done, mate. Breathe that well done. in. Breathe that in. Well done. Absolutely fantastic again, mate. Breathe that in. That's the right. bit over that now, Bailey. At last, Bailey's leg is straight and the pain and the danger of internal bleeding have been reduced. That's the worst we've done. All right, now we've straightened your leg. Yeah. That'll ease your pain a bit. Yeah. OK, how are you doing? <laughs> All right, mate. You've done a brilliant job. Well done. It's a stark reminder for parents of the dangers of junior motocross, but most insist their sport is generally safe. There's many other people here today, dozens of people, who thankfully will make it home in one piece. Um, but unfortunately, it's the risk when you put your leg over that bike. It's one of those risks. But it's a controlled environment. It's an off-road track. Like my boy here today, Neo, he's only eight. They have to um, go somewhere for practice um, and try and learn to become safer riders. Just watch this door. Don't bang into this door. And then we're going to lift him up and just post him down towards the table. It's a relief for Paul. Dealing with children in pain is a job most paramedics hate. It's an amount of pain which obviously is, is unbearable for him. So once we get into casualty, he'll be x-rayed and sent through to uh, wherever he needs to go to. But the casualty expectants. Bailey's going to be flown 20 miles to hospital in Sheffield. Out of a 9-8 Alpha, uh, we're just listing uh, M18. So when we're flying, the problem we've got is some of the sensors are taken away from us, so we just need to make sure that everything's connected to the monitor. So that should something happen in flight, we're going to be pre-prepared for it and we can probably anticipate it better. He's stable, but his injury could still have lifelong effects. Nerve damage, infection and blood loss are common problems associated with a broken femur. Element 9, 8 Alpha, finals for uh, Sheffield Children's Hospital. Going for the open area at the 12 o'clock beyond the bandstand. Uh, yes, 9, 8, London, uh, Sheffield Children's. Yeah, no worries. Wait, see you soon. Bailey's now a short ride from the paediatricians who will diagnose the nature of the fracture. Their verdict could be life-changing. I'm doing services to patient breeding. It's a dull day in North Yorkshire, and low cloud is lurking over the hills. OK, tell me exactly what happened. But air ambulance dispatcher Lee Greenwood is listening in to a 999 about a serious crash in the rolling countryside of the Yorkshire Wolds. Well, don't be telling it. It's happened in a remote area near Scarborough. Traffic and a mid man and alpha lifting outbound. Pilot Ian Mousset and the team must brave the weather to reach the victims. Okay, departing downwind, pull in the power, get the speed on, get the speed on. Villa, thanks. You know, with the only information we know is there's one vehicle that departed. There's been a couple of calls, obviously, quite often. The members of the public are calling in numbers when there's an accident. 
Sometimes that can relate to it be quite serious. The medical skills of paramedics Tony Wilkes and Paul Holmes are badly needed, but the weather is getting worse. We've got a little bit of ropey ahead. We're coming right. And I've just got round that bit and I can see straight ahead again. Thanks to Ian's skill and a lot of local knowledge, he manages to skirt the low cloud and reach the patients. Please, we see about to land. OK, clear right. Thank you. The car skidded on the wet road, rolled up an embankment and overturned, scattering its contents. Two people are trapped. So, two patients. This gentleman's got some scalp lacerations. He was complaining of chest pain. I think I can feel some um, subcutaneous emphysema. There's some diminished air entry. Sam Glass and his wife Jackie were driving home from a DIY store. Now Tony and Paul must decide which one most needs a flight to hospital. The paint they just bought for their decking is now everywhere. Really chest injury, this chap. Yeah, really bit of surgery, ready to see me around stern of it. Okay. Yeah, this lady, so a bit confused as to what's happened, so quick. Lady in that side, driving yeah. that side. Yeah. Do you want a good look at her? Make sure yeah, yeah. Right first, yeah. Are you happy for me to have a look at this lass? Is that all right? Yeah, I can't find anything obvious with her at all. Um, initially, her DCS was 14, just a bit vague. Couldn't really remember where she'd been, although she knows where she is. Right. A bit vague as to sort of events today, but nothing obvious on her at all. Hi, yeah, is it Sam? Got any pain anywhere? Right across the chest. Right across the chest. Jackie, my name's Paul. I know you can be quite cold. OK, so I'll we'll have you out as soon as you can. Firefighters are about to start the delicate task of releasing them. They're going to cut the posts, then lift the roof up so we can get the chap out with injuries to his, his neck. So instead of trying to bring him outside with his... Jackie's injuries appear superficial, but they're concerned about Sam's chest. She doesn't appear to have any serious injuries, so we're going to let that patient go by road. Um, then the passenger's got potential chest injury and uh, a laceration to, to the scalp. Uh, we've altered physiology. He's being flown to Hull Royal Infirmary's major trauma centre. It's 30 miles through poor weather. Push it on, guys. Brilliant. Keep going. Stop. I'll do. OK, into the Humber. We'll move slightly left into the sort of less slopier ground. Yeah. And do it. Ian must stick to strict safety limits on visibility. Got some wires from right to left. Yeah, got them pegs. But his local knowledge is helping. He grew up in Hull. I'm happy where I am. Hospital's just over there. Yeah. OK, mate, all I'm going to do is just follow the railway line down. Yeah, that sounds good. Hull Royal Infirmary serves half a million people on Yorkshire's east coast. Many patients, like Sam, have to be transported up to 40 miles for treatment. OK, ready, steady, move. Chest injuries are painful and potentially life-threatening. His condition is serious. It's a lonely life being a hill farmer in the Yorkshire Dales. When something goes wrong up here, you're on your own. For thousands of people on the fells, Helimed 99 is a lifesaver. It covers a vast area of England's biggest county, more than 2,000 square miles. 99 lifted, 17, 10, hold on. Today, Sunday League veteran John Baxter is bringing some local knowledge to the mission. Is dead near Kendall. Uh, no, further not. Well, it's, yeah, it's not that far away. It's on the way to Kendall. I played, I nearly brought my leg in dead playing football. On the plus side, town won. 2 0. <laughs> Paramedic Kit von Mikvitz knows it's a serious case. A farmer missing on the fells with a potentially fatal condition. We're on the way to a patient with heart failure and breathing problems. It sounds like they're in a very isolated area, so land crews are having difficulty accessing them. Um, hopefully we'll be able to attend and just help them out with, uh, with being able to land in the scene. We haven't been given a great deal of information about the call, but we believe that somebody's uh, in, in an isolated farmhouse and they haven't got land access. So it's possible that we'll be the first on scene at this call. Dent is a long way and the chopper burns more than a gallon of fuel a minute. This is where we put some extra motion lotion on, mate. 
and we'll pick up the valley running away as we come over the top. The man's missing on the fells above his remote farm, 2,000 feet up in the Three Peaks. All right, so we'll split the valley, go over the railway line, and then follow it up into Dent. Okay, yeah, so road over the river. Follow the road up, and then it's a... Is that actually it looks that like it, it looks like it's the first farmhouse on the left. Or the, the one before. The caravan, yeah. yeah. Well, the We've got to on. assume it's the one before. A local ambulance crew are hitching a lift up the hill. Luckily, a family member has just found the patient near his abandoned quad pike. Cool. All right, guys, I'm just going to put you a little bit further forward up the slope. All right, guys, I can see where I'm going. Pack got your cat. It's a tricky place to land. Right, guys, do you want to bail out with what kit you need? Yep. Pilot Chris is dropping off the crew, then flying off to a safer site to shut down. Sorry, right. he's had to drop us off. My name's Kit, I'm one of the paramedics. 73-year-old Tommy Capstick has spent his life tending sheep on these fells. Now he's desperately ill. His son-in-law came looking for him when he didn't come home for lunch. Couldn't find him, I noticed his quad missing out at building. I just come across him here, full of hailstones, he's been horrendous. He didn't know me, he was semi-conscious, so that's why I stripped off. I don't go about dent like this on a day like so I put what I could round him. Did you feel dizzy or sick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And So you didn't fall off, you don't think? No. no. He certainly hasn't had an accident on his quad bike. It's just as though it's been parked. Despite the biting Pennine wind, Tommy's temperature is very high. It sounds like he's collapsed medically and then somehow made his way down here from the top of the fell. Um, because he's gone dizzy, felt faint or, or whatever, okay. and, uh, and then collapsed. Yeah. Sats were really low when they got here, and he's really, really hot. I don't know, how, how did you find him? Yeah, right. you go. Cheers, Good Michael. lad. How did you find him? looking for him because he's been missing since lunchtime. Right, OK. We'll do some checks, Tommy, and then we'll get you, get you off the... Uh, off the floor and we'll take you to hospital for a checkup. I think, by the sounds of things. OK. Tommy had not been well. No cough or cold or anything recently? He's had a bit of a... Yeah, that's what he thought was coming bit down. Bit of a cough, has he? Right. down with a chill, because he's been okay. out round his sheep yeah, in the yeah. wet, so we just thought he's getting a bit of a chill. But I did okay. notice yesterday he was a bit vacant. Fine. And a bit slow. Not quite his normal self. OK. Kit diagnoses a serious infection. So it sounds as though perhaps he's, he's, got, he's going to just, just towards a bit of sepsis. Sepsis can kill. If Kit's hunch is right, Tommy's life is on the line. You do feel awfully, awfully hot. Yeah. I think you've got an infection, Tommy. Yeah. I'm worried that you might have a, an infection on your chest or somewhere else, and that's what's caused you to, to collapse and be dizzy. OK. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Now then, Tommy, this will be quite a sting in your arm. Pennine farmers are legendary for their toughness. But this is an illness no one can ignore. Scratch coming now. Yep. Well done, Tommy. Kit's just going to uh, cannulate him and give him some fluids. I think, uh, I think he's got an infection, so just to sort of um, water down the effects of that infection, really. Well, are you warm now? Yeah, it's still cold, but the sun's on, you know, so... When the body's overwhelmed by an infection, the blood vessels open up, and that can cause problems with people's blood pressure and the, the oxygen getting to their brain and their vital organs. So we start a treatment with oxygen, and we start a treatment with intravenous fluids. But what Tommy really needs is antibiotics. Still all good and fine, guys. Tommy's life will soon be in the hands of doctors at the Royal Lancaster Infirmary. If he does have sepsis, his recovery is far from certain. It's a summer's afternoon in North Yorkshire, and the gardens are in full bloom. But nature has taken a terrible toll on one man. I have a job for you. General area of Ravensworth near Richmond. Severe allergic reaction, wasp sting, cardiac arrest. Stung by a wasp, anaphylaxis. The race is on to resuscitate the patient, believed to be a cyclist. Paramedics Kit and Pete are heading for a small village in the Yorkshire Dales. 
pilot Ian is at full throttle. Had him at nine and a half, uh, and just lifted top if we're uh, approximately three miles southeast of Leeming. Uh, we're on route to an incident at Richmond, climbing 1,500 feet for a basic turn. We've got reports that someone in quite a remote area in North Yorkshire has been stuck by uh, a Biora wasp. As a result of this, believed to have gone into anaphylactic shock, which is, is quite a rare occurrence, but a life-threatening one. Uh, and then there are further reports of the patients now in cardiac arrest. Anaphylaxis is a massive immune reaction to a toxin. It can kill. If we can get on scene quickly and we can start taking measures to, to try and reverse the cause of the anaphylaxis, uh, but you know, time is of the essence with any cardiac arrest and it, it, it wants good quality CPR from the start, you know, to enable someone to have a good chance of survival. But there's good news from the scene. And now, now cardiac arrest resolved at 13.09, has had two rounds of adrenaline. Over. That's received, thank you. That's a good thing, so otherwise it would have been three quarters of an hour after arrest. Yeah. The cyclist staggered into the village pub before collapsing. Can't see any wires this side of the road at all. Helimed 99 is touching down on the village green. We've got this 31 year old male. When I got to him first, he was very, very heavy, starting with facial swelling and also really struggling to move air. Um, Local paramedics have just won a life or death battle for now. Went to a GCS of around about six, mm -hmm. really struggling. Hi guys. 31 year old Chris Wells almost died, despite a massive dose of adrenaline. No, that's great. His face is still swollen. He believes that the wasp went into his um, cycle helmet and has stung him. There's a visible sting mark on his head. Chris, just going to move you to the aircraft. All right, get an update from these guys and then we'll get you through to hospital, all right? You're feeling much better now. Yeah. 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 Uh, they're doing a good job, these guys, yeah. but we'll get you to hospital a bit quicker now. But he could still have a relapse. He got quite significantly unresponsive. Um, had a little bit of a collapse on me as well. Um, but he's, he's a lot better now. He's stabilised. He's had a lot of drugs. Um, so obviously that, that, that'll take effect on him. Um, but he's never had this before, so he's certainly into that investigating. Chris always reacted badly to stings, but this single wasp almost killed him. Chris, yeah. never had this before, have you, buddy? I've been, no, I've been, uh, I've been yeah. stung recently, but not, not, but not like this. No. OK, it can happen like that, OK? Don't worry, you're fine now. He's right. worried. He doesn't realise how serious this crisis was. I'm just going to fly this gentleman to James Cook. Sounds like he's had a fairly lucky escape. The treatment that these guys have given him has uh, brought him round. Brought him have done a really good job, so... We're going to get him there as quickly as we can now and let them have a look at him. You've got a lot going off in your body with the drugs that's been given to you. The obvious, the, the reaction you had initially, which was quite a severe one, your face is still quite puffed up. The fact these guys managed to get to you so quickly to, to give you those drugs has, has sort of been a, a big boost. Okay. They're flying Chris 25 miles to the James Cook Hospital in Middlesbrough. Chris is still unstable. He needs intensive care. Good Paul Bowman, it's Chris and we're there. Okay. Chris? Alright mate, couple of minutes. It's been a textbook rescue, and the hospital is pulling out the stops. Just going down, security is out. The front of the trauma unit has been sealed off for Ian's landing. Chris is being taken straight to Resus. But his case is serious, and he's still not out of danger. Take a bit of Take a through discretion, present position, surface room 20011, cross all runways. It's rush hour in the crowded skies of the north. We take 
Yeah, visual. Sure. Helimed 99 is on an emergency mission, but pilot Steve Woodby must still avoid the traffic. Copy visual, Helimed 99 Alpha. We'll remain at 500 until we're at the second. All the RAF's new pilots train in Yorkshire, and most of them seem to be in the air. Got the plane at now at 10 o'clock, Steve. In the 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, come on the top of us. He's the one at 1,000, we're at 500. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of the circuit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paramedics Lee Greenwood and Lisa Raywood are on an unusual mission. Somebody's fallen out of bed uh, with uh, central C-spine tenderness, so uh, that's all we know at the moment. The patient's back injury could be life-changing. Kind of a 9-9 alpha, uh, we're just arriving on scene, thank you. There's a gate there on the right, you can get straight down to the ambulance. Right. We'll land at the back of that then. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, good deal, let's see. I'm on the ground here now. I'll wait till you shut down, Steve. Roger. They've landed in a small village on the edge of Cropton Forest. Local paramedics have already started treating the woman. Hiya, yeah, right. Then he was fallen um, on a, a, a fix. Um, bloody nose, but she's got C, C1, C2 tenderness and she's got pins and needles in her hands. Right. She's also got a possible wrist fracture. Right. Um, I'll follow you up. Morning. Jennifer collapsed in her bedroom. So she sat on the edge of her bed to yeah. take a drink. Yeah, next And thing. then, so we're thinking sort of a collapsed query cars yeah, then. Okay. Cars. Just had, as you say, face planted the floor. Just right. Her husband Mick dialed 999. All I heard was a great big thump and I shouted and um, she never answered, so I came and she was lying uh, face towards the, the wall um, on, a, on a tummy and it was obvious and you could see the blood and that she couldn't. I mean, she was unconscious for about two minutes. They must handle their patient carefully. If she does have a spinal injury, one wrong move could lead to paralysis. How are you feeling now? Yeah. Where's your pain? I don't have any, really. No. That's tender, is it? OK. But there's a problem. The weather's getting worse. So it's going to be three to 500 foot cloud base. Okay. And it's already... The airport is already saying it's uh, for IFR only. The nearest trauma unit in Middlesbrough is already covered by thick cloud. Oh, OK, right. The paramedics would like to take this patient to James Cook uh, Hospital, which is uh, only about 20 miles away. Um, the problem with, with that area at the moment is uh, the, the low cloud and uh, poor visibility. Right, are we in a position to start immobilising? Apparently she needs a trauma centre, so we're looking at either Hull Royal or uh, the Leeds General Infirmary, um, both of, of which the weather is much better in that direction. And moving Jennifer is not going to be easy. It's a small house with a long staircase and a tiny landing. Unfortunately, some houses are just not designed for easy, easy extrication, so there are lots of hands and uh, lots of good communication between us. We should be able to get her down the stairs and then onto the stretcher into the ambulance and just drive around the corner, load into the back of the helicopter. Man handling Jennifer down the stairs requires strength and skill. Okay. All right, let's bring it back. All right, uh, all right, it's good now. Really now. All right, get now. Put your bum on Tyler. And because of the nature of her injury, it must be done very carefully. Right, there we are. Right, if you can push up. Yeah, got it, yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because there's, there's quite a lot of friction between the bag and the staircase, so I think we're going to yeah. be all right here. Don't eat yourself, please. Just... I'm all right. OK. Let it come down now, OK? Right. Right, we're down. OK. Speed is essential. The weather is forecast to deteriorate throughout the day. Pilot Steve thinks they can reach the trauma unit in Hull, 30 miles south. I've just checked the weather again and Leeds is, is clamped out. <laughs> is it clamped out as well? I wonder if that's why, yeah. So what we're going to do now is drive you around to a helicopter. Oh, right. And then we're going to put you in a helicopter and fly you to Hull. Jennifer has been totally immobilised for her flight to hospital. You all right there? 
At the moment, it's just a precaution. But the risk of a spinal injury is high for patients experiencing her symptoms. Would you like some heat? Uh, yes, please. The uh, patient did say she was cold. Right, there you go. She's got some central uh, tenderness um, in the upper spinal neck area um, and she's also complaining of pins and needles in both hands. So for that reason, she's triggering to the need to go to a major trauma centre for assessment uh, due to the um, altered neurology. It could be a medical reason that's triggered it. She's no recollection of events, but we won't know until hospital's done further tests. The other Yorkshire Air Ambulance, Helimed 98, is already on the helipad in Hull. Nine, nine, eight, just uh, touched down at Hull Royal. Uh, okay. Well, he's parked on the far left, so that's fine. But yeah. Thankfully, there's plenty of room for her sister ship. You good to the right? Thank you. Yeah, the left. Got the lights. Yeah. Sure. We'll just go beyond those. Aren't yeah. It? All good. Good in the hood. Neurologists are waiting for Jennifer. She'll be x-rayed and scanned as soon as she arrives in Resus. The results will be critical for her and her husband. Exhaustive tests fail to reveal the cause of her collapse, and her fall hasn't caused any significant injury apart from a broken nose. She's soon sent back to picturesque Rydale, to recover from her health scare. Johan, the DIY enthusiast whose life was saved by his wife's first aid skills, made a good recovery. Thanks to rapid resuscitation in his own garage, he lost no brain function. Huge thanks go to my wife first because she was the first to arrive. She heard me fall. She came in and uh, gave me CPR. So she kept me alive. So well done, lots of people can't do that in that situation. I feel a bit guilty, really, using two helicopters. I hope it didn't interfere with saving somebody else. It's just incredible, the, the, the service that's provided. Uh, you know, I'm so grateful, you know, they saved my life. Bailey, the teenage biker who shattered his thigh when his throttle stuck open, took months to fully recover from his accident. It looks like his off-road biking days are over. His mum's put her foot down. In the future, probably not, not on my motocross bike because my mum doesn't like it. The couple whose car cartwheeled on the Yorkshire Wolds spilling their freshly bought paint had to put off their decoration project, but both made a good recovery. Tommy, the sheep farmer who went missing on the fells, was found to have contracted a severe infection. He went on to develop pneumonia. Thankfully, after several weeks in hospital, he was well enough to return to the Dales. And cyclist Chris is now understandably wary of wasps and bees. I believe it took 15 minutes from being stung to uh, collapsing in, in the, a nearby pub, which I managed to get into and ask for help. Doctors have told him his attack could have been fatal. He'll be prepared in future. I carry uh, two EpiPens around. They will save my life, maybe, you know, if I get stung again by a wasp.